everyone, this is TJ from Avid and welcome to Pro Tools Fast Start. If you're new to Pro Tools and you're looking to get in here and start making your own music quickly and creatively, you have come to the right place. Throughout this series of videos, I'm gonna show you how we made the track that you heard in the introduction step by step. And by the time we're finished, you're gonna have all the tools you need to make your own music in Pro Tools. That being said, let's go ahead and jump right in and get started. A great place to start in any genre of music, and certainly the place that I started with this track is drums. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna create a drum track, and we're gonna program a drum pattern in Pro Tools. Now, when you first open Pro Tools, you're gonna see this dashboard window. And on the left-hand side, you're gonna have some options. You're gonna wanna go ahead and click on Getting Started. The Getting Started tab has some excellent resources for you if you're new to making music in Pro Tools. But for today, we're just gonna go ahead and jump into one of these templates. Now, generally speaking, templates are a great tool for us to utilize because all of the guesswork of optimizing Pro Tools for what we're doing is already done for us. So let's click on Singer Songwriter and let's press Create a new dialog box will appear asking us what we want to name our session. And I'm gonna name this session, Record a Song. We click Save and Pro Tools will create our new session for us. So once your Pro Tools session opens, this is what you're gonna be looking at. Now there's a lot to unpack here, but don't worry, I'm gonna take you through every step one at a time. Now, when making a drum loop, the first thing we want to do is we want to set the tempo of our song. If we take our mouse and scroll up here to the top right hand corner, we can see tempo with a numerical value next to it. Right now, that tempo is set to 100 BPM or beats per minute. And if we press spacebar to play, this is what we hear. So what you just heard is our click track, or in other words, a metronome track to make sure that we stay in time and that everything conforms to the beat of our song. 100 BPM is perfect for us today. You can adjust this, but we're gonna stay right there. Now that we have our tempo set, the next thing we need to do is we need to come over here to this icon with the play button. We need to right click it and make sure that loop and dynamic transport are both selected. So make sure that those are selected and now we are ready to choose a drum patch. On the left-hand side of our screen, you'll see tracks listed. And as you might have guessed, Drum Machine is the track that we're gonna be using today. First thing we do is make sure that this Record Enable button is selected. Once selected, it will start flashing red. And essentially, it means that this Drum Machine track is the track that we're gonna be hearing out of our speakers as we use it. Next thing we're gonna do is scroll over to these inserts. Now, these inserts are where we can put plugins, or in this case, virtual instruments like drum machines. There's already one loaded here called Groove Cell. So let's click on it and it pulls up the drum machine that's loaded in the track. Now, if we click on any of these drums, we should be able to hear them coming out of our speakers. And we do, which is great. And now we have to choose a preset. If we scroll up here to the librarian menu, you can see that there's a ton of presets to choose from, and there are amazing presets in here that I highly recommend you explore and find something that inspires you. But for our purposes today, I have my preset saved and we're gonna stick with that. So now we can close out of this window and get back to our edit window. But before we move on, let's go ahead and name our track, which is a great habit to get into. I double click where it says drum machine and I can name it whatever I want. I'm gonna call this drums, I press enter and we've named our track. Now we're gonna program our drum loop with something called MIDI. We can get into our MIDI editor window by right clicking on our drums track and scrolling down to open in MIDI editor. If you're not familiar with MIDI, it essentially takes something that we're familiar with, like a keyboard in this case, and allows us to trigger our drum sounds with different keys. So if you scroll down, to this key that says one on it or C1 and click, you're gonna hear our kick drum. And as you move up the keyboard, you'll hear that all of our drum tracks are assigned to different keys. And today, 
what we're going to do is we're going to draw in a pattern where each note corresponds to a particular key. So the first thing we do in this process is we set our loop length. We can do that by going up here to bars and beats, making sure that our cursor icon is showing, and clicking and dragging until we have a one bar loop set. In order to add a new drum part, you simply double click next to the drum that you want and it adds a note. I've added a kick drum. And now when we play our track, you can hear that our kick part is looping over and over again. So let's add one more kick drum and a couple of snares. Let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, that's the start of a really basic beat, sounding good. Next thing that you wanna add, which is a really essential drum part, is hi-hats. So let's find where our hi-hat tracks live on our keyboard. There they are. I'm gonna add a hi-hat to maybe every other column here. That gives us a really basic foundational drum part that we can do a lot with. Let's hear what that sounds like. Great. And now that we have our drum foundation set, we can actually turn off our metronome because we won't need it anymore. So if we scroll back up here to where we set our tempo, I'm just gonna click to turn that off. Now let's talk for a second about velocity. Velocity essentially tells us how hard or soft our notes will play. So let's take, for example, this hi-hat. If I click and drag my velocity up, my note plays harder. And if I drag it down, my note plays softer. You can utilize velocity to add so much humanization and groove and feel to your electronic drums. Let me demonstrate that. Let's click and drag a box around our entire drum pattern so that we can manipulate all our velocities at once. Let's turn everything up all the way. So we have a really broad dynamic range to work with. Here's what we have right now. Now let's select every other hi-hat by holding down shift and selecting, taking these velocities and turning them way down to give our drum groove some variation and a little bit more feel. Now to my ear, that sounds a lot more human, a little more varied, and I really like how that sounds. Let's add another hi-hat in here just to mix it up a little more. And let's fatten up our snare sound by adding a clap on top of it. Let's find a clap on our keyboard. Here we are, adding a clap. And just for good measure, let's add one more sound. I like this little click sound we have right here. So let's add that to the very, very end of our pattern. Let's hear what that sounds like. Let's say we wanna double the length of this pattern so we can add even more variety. There are a few ways to do this. One way is to drag a box around all of your notes, press Command C or Control C if you're on a Windows machine, click at the beginning of the next bar and press Command V or Control V to paste. Alternatively, let me press Z to undo that. We can select our notes again, and press Command D or Control D to duplicate our drum pattern. Either way, we get the same result and now our drum pattern is twice as long. But if you remember, our loop length is only set to one bar. So let's drag that out by clicking right here, our timeline selection out point and moving it all the way to the end of our second bar. Now our loop is twice as long. But for variation's sake, we don't want that same pattern to play twice. Let's change up this second pattern. I'm gonna add one more hi-hat, and let's take this last note and change it. I like that open hi-hat sound, so I'm gonna move this forward a bit, delete this closed hi-hat, turn the velocity up just a hair. Let's see what we have.
So we're going to close out of our MIDI editor by moving our mouse icon until we see this. We double click and we're back in our edit window. Now what we see here is called a clip. This represents the MIDI data that we just put into this track. And if you want to get back to your MIDI editor for any reason, a quick way to do that is to simply double click on your clip, which pulls your MIDI editor up again. Let's close out of that. Now, as you can see, our drum loop is two bars long, but I'm guessing that our song is going to be a little longer than two bars. So I'm going to show you how to loop this clip. Now we can simply do that by right clicking, scrolling down to where we see loop, clicking there, and it's going to ask us how many loops we would like. Now, thankfully, you don't have to know exactly how many loops you need to fit your song. That's easily changed, and I'm going to show you how. First, I'm going to press 2 just as a starting point. Now my clip has been looped. And if I move my mouse to the very edge of our clip, because I'm using the Smart tool, our mouse changes into a Trim tool, and I can loop my clip forward or backward by simply clicking and dragging. So right now, I'm going to keep it at 2, and we're going to stay right there. Now, at this point, we need to change a quick setting because up until now, we've been locked in a specific loop so we can build a drum part. But now we're talking about editing a whole entire song. So we want to be able to move around quickly and not have to be stuck in one singular loop. That's where this setting Link Timeline and Edit Selection comes in really handy. If we click this, now anywhere I click on the timeline, it starts my song from that point, which is a much faster way to work when you're editing a whole song. Let's hear this drum track that we built from the beginning. And just like that, we have our drum part. It's a solid foundation for us to build the rest of our song on Make sure that you join us for the next video where we're going to be using MIDI to track bass and keys parts for our song. Thank you so much for hanging out with us, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.